Hey again, everyone. Gary Roth here with the Professional Podcast. Uh, I wanted to come on before this particular episode and talk about and really give some context to the reason why I decided to tackle this subject. Social media is a completely customizable experience. I see day in and day out a lot of people trying to blame social media for things, uh, increase the importance of social media when it shouldn't be important. You know, people getting stressed out, people starting fights, people losing friendships and things like that. And what I wanted you to know, and, and the reason why I did this show, is because social media is not the enemy. Social media doesn't make people evil. Social media doesn't make bad people or make people bad. Bad people are bad people. And when there's a platform where they don't have any accountability, well, they can be as nasty as they want. And what happens is their true colors come out. So there are some ways that you can customize your experience. You can block. You cannot spend time on certain things. The algorithms are out there to design, excuse me, they're designed to do or to keep things in front of you that they think you want to see. So the reason why I tackled the social media experience, having a better social media experience, is just so that you can use social media effectively without being drugged through the mud by some idiot troll that has like three followers on Twitter. So anyway, listen, I hope you enjoy the show. Uh, please share and subscribe with somebody that uh, may need it and uh, come back for the next one. Maybe I can help you uh, enjoy things even more. Take care. You're listening to The Professional Podcast with Gary Roth. You're listening to The Professional Podcast, hosted by the Blue Collar Consulting Group. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Professional Podcast. I'm your host, Gary Roth. This podcast is brought to you by my company, Blue Collar Consulting Group. So what we're going to talk about tonight is we're going to talk about social media. Um, hopefully, it's going to be a mix between uh, personal and professional I'll do my best to uh, find the uh, most helpful questions or the most questions that are beneficial to your situation. I'm also live streaming this on Facebook, and so if you are tuning in there, I certainly hope you will drop a comment or ask a question, and we will certainly uh, do the right thing. So what I'm doing is a couple of previous episodes ago, I decided to answer questions from Quora, Q-U-O-R-A.com. It's an awesome question and answer website, and it's a great place to share your uh, knowledge. It's also a great place to gain knowledge, and so I use that as a basis for a lot of feeder material because if people are asking those questions, chances are I can answer them, and so what uh, we're in tonight is the social media strategy uh, question. So the first question that we're going to come up with tonight is, have you ever called out or been called out rather on unwritten rule of using social media? I think that if you're doing any kind of social media whatsoever, you're bound to break a few rules. And here are a few that I have broken. And my biggest thing was uh, double posting. So really what you want to do is, I learned a long time ago, you don't post the exact same comment on every single platform. You've probably seen this before where somebody will post something on Instagram and they'll rely on Instagram to share it to Facebook or Instagram and then to share it into Twitter. That is absolutely a terrible strategy because a lot of times when it posts on the other platforms, it just posts a link. And so it doesn't actually populate the photo and then the person has to click on a thing. And if you're in the marketing world, it's called reducing friction. You don't ever want to have to create another step. You always want to make your content, your media, whatever, immediately and beautifully available. So sharing inside of the other platforms to other platforms, terrible idea. That's definitely not something you want to do. And not only that, the preferred sizes of images across the social media platforms are very specific. And so the standard size on Facebook is different than the standard size on LinkedIn. It's different than the standard size on Instagram or LinkedIn. And so it's important that you know those proper sizes, those proper formats. And then let's think about this too. Here's an unwritten rule of social media. You have to talk the language. 
you know, 30 hashtags on Instagram is what you should be doing. But really, two, three, four hashtags max on Twitter. You might as well just forget about adding hashtags on Facebook because it doesn't doesn't index your stuff any better. It doesn't help. So I recommend that you learn the platform. And you know, if you're starting out, learn one platform at a time. Because if if you want to have any kind of meaningful purpose on social media, then you should you should learn how to do it right. You should learn what works. And you should learn the language so that your posts have the most impact. Look, if you're sharing a picture of your family on Facebook and that's all you care about, then just ignore that. But if you're trying to change opinions, if you're trying to shape viewpoints, if you're trying to organize a campaign, if you're trying to sell a product, sell a service, promote a company, then you darn well better learn how to make proper posts on social media. Don't half-ass this, okay? Don't just think it's going to work. Don't just post and then walk away. Like, there, there's a lot of things you need to do. Otherwise, you're going to just get laughed at. You're going to get ignored. Um, you know, nothing's going to happen for what you're posting. And if you're trying to have an answer or trying to have something on your, your post, then, you know, take the effort to freaking, uh, you know, do the right thing. All right, and the right thing includes learning, um, you know, learning the platform, learning the language. All right, next social media question we have: What is the best social platform currently? It's a great question, and so there are a ton of social media platforms. YouTube is social media. Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, all of these platforms to share and exchange information. Information comes in a variety of forms, video, picture, words, audio. So what's the best social media platform? Nope, nobody can answer that, okay? It just depends on what you're trying to do. If you wanna to try to get a job, LinkedIn is probably the best place to be. Hi, Romina, that is a live shout out to one of the most awesome podcasters on the planet down in Florida, Romina, RM Podcast FL, if you're looking for some awesome interviews. She has mastered the art of leveraging podcasting to build a network, and let me tell you, it's a great strategy. That's another great strategy for social media, is podcasting. So the best social media platform really depends on, like I said, what you're trying to do. If you're a visual person, Instagram is probably the place to be. You know, Facebook to me is kind of like your foundation. I think I think Facebook will allow you to branch out into other things, connect with folks, and it really has a little bit of everything. You know, Twitter, if you want to connect with professionals, just like LinkedIn. Uh, so, you know, it just depends on what you're trying to do. And then I would align your goals with uh you know, the social media platform. If you are, um, let's say you're like in the technical, in some type of technical or scientific field and you want to get noticed and publish your papers. I mean, yeah, you could, you could do things on Facebook, LinkedIn, stuff like that. Instagram's not a great place for that. So just think about what goal you have and then line up the social media platforms based on that goal. All right. Trust me. You never knew that scientists use YouTube, right? But they do every single day, you know, uh, people looking for a job can use Instagram, but you know there's 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 ideal platforms, and if you have a limited amount of time, it's best to know what platform works best. Obviously. All right. So next question. Uh, this one kind of bleeds over from marketing. How do you start branding? Oh man, this is uh, an incredibly valuable question. How do you start branding? Branding, in my opinion, is nothing more than consistency. Now, when I say consistency, what I mean by that is you being true to you. So, you know, the essence of branding is telling the world what you're all about, okay, and then leveraging that to have somebody take some action. So, like, when it comes to branding, there's a lot of things you can do. Like, a personal brand is if you like to write music and you like to mix music. Well, branding, it means that you're going to create this online identity and it's going to be all about your music. And so when you're doing posts in, in Twitter, Instagram, SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, then, it, then it's all about your music. And then like when you're on the other social media platforms like Facebook, you're going to have a Facebook page. It's going to be all about your music. You're going to be commenting on other folks on Instagram. You're going to be posting little clips. Like personal branding is about consistency. 
And so when you brand, it's you are all this is what you're all about. Like for me, it's like, you know, uh, not non-Christian. Obviously, I'm a Christian, so I want I want people to know me for that. But I want to be known as the guy that has a helpful podcast. I love the Kansas City Chiefs. I love Led Zeppelin. I love heavy equipment. So I love fishing. You'll see these social media accounts specific to those things that I like. And your branding is. You know, it's about consistency. It's about that accuracy in what you're trying to, to prove. So when it comes to branding, decide what your voice is. What do you want the world to know you for? Boom. And then that's what you do. And then everything that follows on on these social platforms, TikTok, YouTube, Vimeo, whatever, then it's all always going to be the same. And so that's how you build a brand. Consistency is key. All right. So should I be, next question, Uh, should I be bothered that I don't have any Instagram posts? Well, you know, I don't know. Why are you on Instagram? Uh, Are you, are you just, are you stalking people? Are you looking at all the pretty girls or the cute boys or whatever? Like, why are you on Instagram? Social media becomes not social when the trolls take over. And so... What I mean by trolls is like people that don't contribute. They just look. They just lurk in the background. They just kind of hang out. And they just they just watch. And, and, you know, that's totally legal. That's totally fine. But I think if you give a crap about the community, then you should contribute. If you give a crap about the quality of the platform, you should contribute. You know, throw a picture up. Um, leave a comment. You know, have a nice caption. So, you know, just be interactive. That's what makes social media great is when you can be interactive. And so for this person that posted that, you have to question, why don't you have any posts, right? Why don't you? And so that that's how you answer that. Should you be bothered? I don't know. Should you? Maybe you should because it's not social if you're not adding anything. Uh, biggest thing, hey, real quick, if you're uh, tuning in live on Facebook, if you've got a question about social media or social media marketing, uh, throw a chat question up there. I'd be more than happy to answer it. We are answering questions from Quora, Q-U-O-R-A, in the social media, social media marketing um, kind of area. So if you're doing anything on social media, tune in, listen up, because there are right ways and there are wrong ways to do it. Okay. How? Oh, great question. How can I persuade my Instagram followers to like my posts? Basically, this is a question of how can I be more popular on Instagram? So let me tell you, it's actually not that difficult, but it goes back to before you have to be consistent, right? Consistency is key in all this stuff. So when you post something on Instagram, there are a lot of things that you can do. First of all, make sure that you're using all 30 hashtags because when somebody looks up a hashtag, it's possible that they may see your post. And if they see your post, they may like it, they may comment, they may follow you, which is the ultimate goal if you're trying to build an audience. And so when you're out there on Instagram, you can comment on other people's posts. They may look at your stuff. You can send private messages. You can view stories and leave comments. You can ask questions in your posts. You can Share your Instagram account across other platforms. That's some, uh, excuse me, cross-platform promotion. So if you want to get more activity on Instagram, you simply have to be more active. In fact, I posted a picture today, and on it was a very sharp-dressed man. And on it, I said, if you want to live an uncommon life, you have to live an uncommon life. And so if you want activity on Instagram, guess what? You have to be active. And so don't be a spam bot. Don't control paste anything. Leave legitimate, genuine questions and comments. People will find your stuff. People will like it. And make sure you post multiple times per day. We finally have a question from Romina. Romina, biggest mistake people make when promoting their skills and work. I think one of the biggest problems that people make, uh, number one, is the blast promotion. Like this, share this, subscribe here without taking any time whatsoever to actually give the person a reason to like, share, follow, subscribe, whatever. For example, I have podcast host on my LinkedIn headline or, you know, like under your name, all your, your kind of your titles. Thing is, I probably get seven, eight, nine, ten solicitations every week from quote unquote podcast promoters. 
Uh, they, they speak in very broken English. I don't know if they're in America and they all literally are promising the same thing. I can promote your podcast. I can get you followers. I can get you real listens. I can get you ranking on iTunes. It's literally the same message day in and day out. Here's the problem. They never once use my name. They have not heard my podcast and they don't ask any questions. They don't have a genuine interest. And so One of the biggest mistakes that I see when people are promoting their skills and work is that they don't take any time to actually invest in the potential customer. So if you want a client, do the work. Don't be a spam bot. Listen to their podcast. Look at their blogs. Give something to get something. Hey, so for example, if you really want to get my attention, hey, I listened to episode 11 about personal budgeting. I helped a personal finance podcast hosts improve their downloads by 32% last month alone. Here is the person. Here is the data. Here is, you know, my proof. I think that I can do the same for you. Do you know how much that would get my attention? Because I'm in the market to promote my podcast. Everybody wants to grow their podcast. Everybody wants to grow their feed. So that's the biggest mistake that I see. Lack of work. They're being lazy. They're spam bots. And they're not investing in the potential client. That's that baby. That's sales 101 right there. If you can't handle that, then you don't need to be in the market. Thank you, Romina, for that awesome question. You are amazing. Love your podcast. Thanks for connecting with Bill Owen. You are awesome. Okay, so next question. Do you have, okay, let's check this one. Great question. I love going philosophical. This is awesome. Is social media hurting America? If you're tuning in live right this right now, I would love to know your answer on this. Is social media hurting America? Let me tell you, absolutely not. Social media is a tool, right? I've said this a thousand times. Social media is nothing more than a mirror. The same problems that society has now, I'm doing air quotes, The same problems, quote unquote, that America has now, they had 30 years ago. There were bullies 30 years ago. There were diseases 30 years ago, right? There was shame and racism and political division. Dear Lord, people, social media did not create these problems. All right, social media is a mirror. Social media has opened up hundreds of thousands of people to Uh, new careers, new income sources, stay-at-home moms are able to actually make money at home. Teleworking is happening happening all across the United States, right? So social media is not hurting America. Americans are hurting America, all right? People are hurting America, right? Bad attitudes, judgment, narrow vision. These are the things that are hurting America, not social media. Social media is a tool. Without people, it is absolutely useless. All right. People can use social media for good things. They can connect with people all over the world. They can connect with long lost friends. They can keep family and friends notified across the country as if they're actually there with with video chat. Social media allows you to share information just like I'm doing with you right now. Social media allows you to earn income and learn a new skill. Right. So I get fed up with this crap that people are always trying to blame social media all right it can be used for good it can be used for bad all right just like everything else on this planet so no whoever answered this asked this question social media is not hurting america america is hurting america next question all right what should i post on social networks if i don't have ideas that's a great question uh nothing so i'll make it real simple for you if you don't know what you should post on social media networks why are you on social media in the first place Ask that question. Why? Why are you on there? Are you trying to cause trouble? Are you mad? Are you frustrated? Do you need a place to vent? Well, that's that's plenty of things you can look for. You know, a lot of folks are on social media and they, they probably, I shouldn't say a lot, there are a few folks out there, a few people out there that are on social media that shouldn't be. They can't handle the criticisms. They can't handle unregulated speech. And they probably shouldn't be on there. They're very, there's a lot of sensitive people out there. There's a lot of internet tough guys, right? So if you can't handle that, if you don't have the thick skin to do it, and sometimes it gets to me, trust me. Sometimes it gets to me. Some people say the wrong thing or, you know, give the negative feedback that really, really hurts. Hey, look, if you can't take it, get out of the kitchen. If you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. That's what they always say. All right. So, all right. Oh, here's a great question. Here's a great question. 
Do you think social media is overrated? Oh, man. Great question. I wish I had a thousand people watching this so I can hear their responses. But no, social media is not overrated. I don't even know what that means. How do you how is something like social media overrated? Um, what it is, is it it is a valuable tool. It's an incredibly valuable tool. Like I said earlier, you can connect with people all over the world. You can learn new things for free, right? Like the information sharing is outlandish. Doctors can connect with patients through telemedicine. Stay-at-home moms can work. And man, look, social media is not overrated. I think it's often misused. I think it's often abused. But overrated? Absolutely not. All right. Here we go. Here's some more questions. Here's some more questions. All right. So here's a great question for Instagram. How many followers on, do you have on Instagram and how did you get them to follow you? So great question. Instagram is all about activity and consistency. If you want followers, here's a surefire way to get more followers on Instagram. Grab a pencil. Here are ways to get more followers on Instagram. And you can usually do it in a decent amount of time every single day. That's the key. You have to post something every single day. I recommend posting between four and six times per day. Head over to buffer.com and you can get a uh, scheduling software over there. You have to you have to stick with a subject and stick with it, all right? So like for instance, I have I have three Instagram accounts. One Instagram account is nothing but heavy equipment. I started it, I don't know, a few weeks ago, got 100 followers. Another one is fishing. That's my good one. I have almost 4,000 followers on there. And then I have a motivational one, and that just hit, I don't know, 1,100 followers today, I think, something like that. So how do you get followers on Instagram? You post four to six times per day. You have good captions where you ask questions and engage people. You have 30 hashtags on every post. You view the stories of other people, and you leave them a comment. You... Ask questions and leave meaningful content on other posts. So if you want to get act, if you want to get followers on Instagram, post multiple times per day and be interactive. Got it? Now go out there and go get it. All right. What's the purpose of social media? Well, social media is whatever you want it to be. It could be a career. It could be hope. It could be a cure for loneliness. It could be a way to learn new things. It could be a way to be entertained. Social media is whatever you want it to be. But what I hope you don't use it for is I hope you don't use it as a weapon because social media gives you the ability, unfortunately, to be anonymous and say some of the worst horrible things you could possibly say. And there's no accountability. Which is why, if you're going to be on social media, you got to have some thick skin. Because there are some terrible things out there. Now, uh, Seth, uh, Seth Godin talked about the danger of disposable online profiles. And, oh, man, he has some really compelling thoughts on that. Seth Godin, he's an incredibly talented, visionary uh, author and entrepreneur. Super cool guy. Uh, okay, let's see. How do I get rid of social media from my life? Easy. Delete your apps. That's that's easy. All right. You don't need Quora to tell you that. How do I get rid of social media? Just delete the apps. Delete your account. Delete the apps. Turn your phone off. I, what do you want? I mean, just, just stay off your phone. That's that's what your phone basically is these days, is a mobile social media platform. Think about it. All right. So next question. This is a great question. This is a really good question. Do you consider social media stars to be celebrities? Yeah. I do. Anytime somebody gets the attention of the eyeballs, they're a celebrity, period. There are trashy celebrities like Jerry Springer, and then there's, you know, other celebrities like movie stars, musicians, athletes, political figures. All of these human beings are celebrities. No matter where they get their fame, no matter where they get their fame, they are celebrities. Celebrity is sim nothing more than folks that, um, you know, grab the attention of eyeballs. That's really all it is. So, all right. Okay, great question. And if you're in social media marketing of any type, if you're in social media marketing of any kind, this is a great question. 
Why do people follow other people on social media? Here's why. is because they want to know when they post something. And when you subscribe, you get notifications. You, you kind of get inside access to these postings. Uh, and so when you follow somebody on social media, you know, but depending on the platform, you can get notified. It just kind of shows up whatever. Uh, you, you want to know when somebody's posting something. And so, you know, it's like how you get those followers is you're posting meaningful content. You're posting something that's useful or something that moves somebody, right? Like it has value to the follower, all right? And that's why uh, people follow other people because they want to see what's next. They're interested, right? It's the same reason you will go see a movie with your favorite actor, it's the same reason why you download new music from your favorite artist. It's because you want more from that person, right? Or that company or that account. And that's why people follow other people on social media so that they can get what's next. Everybody loves what's next, like what's next. All right, we have a comment here, and I'm just going to read it because it's super good. Uh, gosh, I never can remember this guy, say this guy's name right. Jonathan DeVries. I'm, I'm sorry if I messed it up, buddy. Uh, this guy I used to serve in Army Unit with, super cool guy, incredibly intelligent. He says, I agree with the need for meaningful inter, uh, interaction. I'm active on SoundCloud on Reddit, and I only started getting followers on of my music channel once I quote-unquote put myself out there um, for criticism. Then I um, had actual discussions with other musicians about their and my music. I have 57 followers, not bad, but 40 or so are actual fans, 20% are just, you know, the effort... Um, you know, 20% of the effort is making yourself known. The other 80% of the effort is sustaining these meaningful interactions. And I couldn't agree with you more. You know, you got to start somewhere, right? You got to freaking put it out there. You got to lay it out to find out. And so when you do that, you open up yourself to great opportunities, right? And so um, it's, it, it's just beautiful. All right, so we're kind of coming up on the 30-minute mark. And this is a great question. Actually, it's not really a question. It's somebody that's trying to leverage their value in the form of a question, which is really, that's what you call passive aggressive, right? So here, here's where they start. I have never felt more free than when I gave up social media. Should many people do the same? No. You feel free because you felt trapped by social media. And if you feel trapped by social media, you are living a pathetic life. That's, that's all there is to it. If all you have is social media, turn your phone off, unlock the basement dungeon, and go outside and get some sunlight. All right? It's, I just, this, this, these kind of stupid perspectives persist. And, and these, these mindsets are proliferating that social media is the enemy. Social media is not the dang enemy. I don't know how many times I have to say it. It's not the enemy. Social media is a tool, right? And if you're free from social media, goodness, what did you do 10 years ago before social media came around? Were you free then? Probably not. You're probably the same guy that says, I quit watching MTV and now I'm free. Oh, yeah, smoke a joint, you hippie. Look, my point is simply this. We allow these types of perspectives to persist and nobody wins, right? If we are so weak, that we cannot turn off a phone or turn off a tool, turn off a device, then you have personal problems. You, you don't need to blame it on the platform. That, that's my whole point, right? So like, you felt more free. Give me a break, man. Have real relationships, right? Have like real activities. Have a real life and social media will amplify that. If all you have is social media and you feel free, that's pretty pathetic, man. So my point is simply this. Social media is just like everything else. Yeah, you can be obsessed by it. You can be obsessed with video games. You can be obsessed with your car. Uh, watch that show Strange Love or whatever it's called on Discovery. There's some freaky people out there. My point is that balance is everything, right? Social media can enhance an already good life. Social media can really enhance a marketing life. Social media can enhance a music career. Social media can enhance an artistic career or an athletic career. Social media is a tool, and if you feel obsessed by a tool, then you have psychological problems. And so for Mr. Freedom here, well, good luck with your life, because hopefully life without social media and your freedom, good luck with that, buddy. Anyway, listen, I am going to wrap this up. 
on the podcast side before I kill the uh, the live connection. I just really appreciate everybody that's tuned in. I appreciate all my subscribers. I hope that my thoughts and opinions here on social media have been helpful. I promise you, if you leverage social media the right way, you can change your life for the better. No, I'm not saying it's going to solve all your problems, but it's not going to be the source of all your problems either. Social media is nothing more than a mirror. It's an extension of who we are as people. And if non-accountability makes you do crappy things, then you need to probably look deep inside your heart and think about what kind of person you are. But listen, uh, feel free to subscribe, share this. If you know somebody that has anything to do with social media, I'd love to chat. Uh, you can hit me up, Gary, at bluecollarconsultinggroup.com. You can find me on Twitter, blue underscore leadership. Or if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, because I do post several times per day, you can find it, Blue Collar Consulting on Instagram. Thanks for tuning in. Tell somebody you love them today, and I can't wait to hear you on the next one. Take care. <laughs>